What's up, you beautiful bastards? Hope you have a fantastic Tuesday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing we're gonna talk about today is the story coming out of Texas, which also, don't worry. You know, a lot of people, when they watch a show and I say a place that they live, they're like, ah, oh, what'd we do? It's not you, or at least all of you. So there's a story that's blown up about the sexiest of topics, job applications. And specifically, at the center of this story, we have a woman whose job application went viral, Emily Cloud. She lives in Austin, Texas. She applied to an open marketing position at a startup called Kick-Ass Mastermind. Klaus saying she was eager to grow her social media and sales experience, saying she eventually heard back from the company. They then asked her to fill out additional application forms and also asked her to follow them on Instagram. And so all seemed like it was going pretty well until she saw that Kick-Ass Masterminds had posted a cropped photo of her in a bikini to its Instagram story. With Kick-Ass Masterminds adding text to the photo saying, PSA, because I know some of you applicants are looking at this, do not share your social media with a potential employer if this is the kind of content on it. I am looking for a professional marketer, not a bikini model. Adding, go on with your bad self and do whatever in private. But this is not doing you any favors in finding a professional job. Clow, obviously surprised, then messaged the company privately about the photo, saying that she'd screenshotted the story, then saying, I appreciate your advice, to which Kickass Masterminds then replied, remember that everything you put on social is public and future potential employers will see it. Best of luck in your job, sir. Clow then responds again, I am aware of that as I worked with social media for two years. I didn't realize wearing a bathing suit and appreciating my body made me an unprofessional. Most employers and companies, especially those who work with Mark, Marketing have that understanding. I am disappointed to see a company I was very interested in decided to go out of their way to shame an applicant. And she then continues by asking the company to take down the story. Kick-Ass Mastermind simply responds, best of luck. Clow asks again, but then following that, the company blocks her. She then takes to Twitter saying she felt objectified and that she was baffled that the company handled it in such a manner. Also later sharing a photo of the company's bio from its LinkedIn page saying, this is fucking hilarious considering that bio stating that Kick-Ass Masterminds works with rebellious business owners, specifically those who are rebelling from the traditional way of earning a living because they've lost faith in corporate America. And it then goes on to say that it works with business owners who, quote, want other like-minded people to have their backs when shit gets tough in their quest for personal and money freedom. And following this, you know, her post goes viral. You see a wave of support for Clow. You also had others sharing photos like this, which is reportedly from Kick-Ass Mastermind's Instagram page. Are people asking, well, is this photo professional? Also photos like this from CEO Sarah Christensen's personal Twitter. But at the same time, of course, that reaction was not universal. You had some others saying things like, what the hell, of course, it's unprofessional. Women need to help other women learn how to be taken seriously. And that was essentially the full story until yesterday when Christensen posted an apology to Medium, saying in a very human moment, I made an error in judgment by posting to my Instagram stories about a job applicant's online persona. To anyone watching, I am a great case study in what not to do. To Miss Clow, I apologize for my behavior. I intended you no harm. I should never have made that post. To those I serve through my business and who have trusted my counsel, many of you have been affected by this very avoidable event. There are no words to describe how sorry I am that you have felt the consequences of my poor decision. As of recording this video, Kick-Ass Masterminds has set their Instagram to private. The company's Twitter, Facebook, and even LinkedIn page were also taken down. As far as Clow, uh, she seems to be rolling with it with her new Instagram profile reading an unprofessional bikini model. And I'd really love to know your thoughts on this because depending on where you see this story popping up, there, there are vastly different opinions. Right? For example, like on Yahoo News, if, if you look to the top comments, there are a lot of people that are siding with the business. But if you look to places like Twitter where this story blew up, you had a lot of people just calling this blatant slut shaming. Now, as far as my opinion on this, I, I think regarding the company and the CEO publicly shaming this woman, and sure, they cropped out her face. I still think that it's disgusting they did that. But if you want to make an untethered post about your advice regarding hiring practices that doesn't include an actual applicant and her photo, fine. But the way things were actually done, it, it feels petty, unprofessional. It feels like slut shaming from someone that's maybe, maybe at times, given what they've put out on social media, is being hypocritical and maybe jealous. And also, I'll add, as a small business owner, right, someone who employs a number of people, if if you applied to me and this was your profile, I wouldn't give a damn. Right? Like if you're putting stuff out on social media and it's like a, a illegal drug use or you blacked out, right? With the caption "Just Another Tuesday," right? I'm gonna I'm gonna have concerns. But literally, all we're talking about is a young woman who is confident and happy in her body sharing photos. Like I understand that when I hire someone, they're not a robot that's just doing the thing that I need them to do. They are also a person outside of the building. But. Whatever, I, I understand that I'm just one employer in a business that is, is, is not prudish. And so, with that said, of course, I'd love to know your thoughts around this. Then, kind of a quickie story I, I wanna to touch on because it <laughs> blew up yesterday. For those who don't know, uh, there are these people that exist. They were initially the Dobre twins, then the Dobre brothers. You've got Lucas, Marcus, Darius, and Cyrus Dobre. As far as what they do, what they provide to the world according to their YouTube description, we are the Dobre brothers and we do backflips. We dance, we do backflips. They really want you to understand the backflip part. And we also live life like there is no tomorrow. And 
They're also just massively popular on TikTok, with the Dobre twins having 17.6 million fans there. But the reason there was all this news around them, this whole situation blew up, is they're currently on a 21-stop live tour. And according to their site, they offer a range of tickets, starting at $29.99, all the way to just around $600. And part of the tickets here is above general admission is that there is a meet and greet. And a, uh, a video of one of those meet and greets went viral. Uh, I'm gonna have to remove uh, the music that was in it. Hey, so nice to meet you. Oh my God, thank you so much. What was that? Right, so following that, there were a number of people that were like, are you serious? A lot of other people saying it's disgusting. There were people saying, can you imagine treating a fan like that that has spent money on you? Among those calling out the Dobre brothers, you had people like James Charles, who, as you might remember, had been slammed in the past for having tickets that cost $500, tweeting, what the actual fuck is this? And later adding, being tired is not an excuse to not smile and give a hug to people who pay to meet you. YouTuber JC Kalen tweeting that it was actually sad, also noting that the fan probably waited months for this moment. Danny Gonzalez is actually on tour right Right now tweeting. For a second I was like, is there a Dobre Brothers exhibit at Madame Tussauds? Which, for those that don't know, is a wax figure joke. We also have people defending them, saying you don't know what was happening, they could have received bad information right before this moment. And regarding that kind of defense, we saw Lucas Dobre tweet on Monday, after a long 48 hours of restless filming and touring, then meeting thousands of fans with no sleep, we were exhausted by the end of the show. Our true apologies, we are sincerely sorry. And following that, you know, you had some people accepting that apology, some saying it's not enough. And here's the thing, while just quickly scrubbing through this story, I saw some other people sharing their meeting greet videos where there's kind of like half-assed hugs and uh. My opinion is if you're doing these live shows and you're promising a certain experience that these people have paid for, you, you need to make it worth it. Right, so if you want to blame management or someone else for putting too much on your plate, okay, go for that, but then try to actually change. But otherwise, understand you wouldn't have anything without these people. Once again, yes, you guys are massive. I, I had no clue really before this story who you were, but based off of an initial scrub, you need to be the nicest fucking people on the planet, because I don't know other than your looks appealing to younger girls, what what's happening. That does not and will not last forever. And here's the thing, no one's ever gonna be perfect, but you, you have to you have to at least try. You know, if I've ever been at the end of a meet and greet, right, I'm losing my voice, I'm tired, there's always like a, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm trying, thank you so much, but I don't know, that's where I'll leave this one, of course. I'd love to know your thoughts on this. But from that, I wanna share some stuff I love today and today in Awesome, brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. And for those that don't know, Raid Shadow Legends is a brand new collection RPG game that is fantastic, totally free, and gives you a ton that you probably wouldn't expect out of a mobile game. I mean, just check out the amazing graphics and details on these champions, and you have the ability to personally customize your champions by choosing their artifacts and creating a unique mastery build for each one of them. You also don't have to just take my word for it. Raid has more than 10 million players worldwide that have already downloaded the game in just the past six months. It's also this living, breathing thing. They have these huge plans for updates for the game over the next six months, which actually on that note, the highly anticipated Faction Wars feature is now live. Also, there is a new awesome rewards program for new players. You get a new daily login reward for the first 90 days in the game. So if you want to join in on the fun, just go to the video description, click on those special links, and if you're a new player, you'll get 100,000 silver and one badass epic champion called Lightsworn for free. But also, do not wait. That offer only lasts 30 days. So main point, click the link, check it out, and enjoy. And the first bit of awesome is a little bit of a heads up. Tomorrow which is Wednesday is the day that I've been uploading the weekly A Conversation With podcast, me and a guest just kind of talking about whatever. It has been doing fantastically well, so thank you for being a part of that. I've been looking for a more conversational, less jump cutty outlet, so it's, it's awesome that there's an audience that also wants to see that. You can kind of just get used to doing one thing, but the announcement is that tomorrow there won't be a new episode here on YouTube, but you'll still be able to listen to that episode on Apple Podcasts or really any audio platform. I'll provide links down below so you can listen to it wherever you want to listen to it. But yeah, it's just because this episode I didn't have a guest and I had a conversation with you. you you guys send again voice messages, text messages, and it's kind of a fun, more personal filler episode because I needed to stop getting my guests 12 to 24 hours before filming, which is what we had been doing. And so this kind of gave us a buffer week, which has been fantastic. We already have our next four guests booked. It's great. So yeah, just a little bit of a heads up. And uh, if you haven't yet, be sure to follow and subscribe. Then we had Dude Perfect giving us more trick shots. We got the honest trailer for Spider-Man Far From Home. We got the official trailer for Queer Eye, Where in Japan. We had Nick Kroll on The Burger Show. We had Binging with Babish giving us Chicago style pizza from The Daily Show. And if you want to see the full versions of everything I just shared, the secret link of the day, really anything at all, Links, as always, are in the description down below. And then, let's talk about the situation with China, cowering companies, censorship, there's a lot to cover here. Right, and understand, when I'm talking about censorship, I'm also 
also talking about things outside of China itself. So uh, quickly, because I know a, a lot of you aren't familiar with sports, which is part of the reason one of our best-selling shirts of all time is the sports shirt. In the NBA, the National Basketball Association, there is a team called the Houston Rockets. And their general manager, Daryl Morey, tweeted while in Japan for a preseason game, specifically posting an image that says, fight for freedom, stand with Hong Kong. Right, so he was showing support for the pro-democracy protesters in Hong Kong who have been protesting for 18 weeks now. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the protests and how things have developed, how dare you for not watching my show before this video. I've been covering it for a while. Things have been escalating. You can check out those videos. I'll link to them down below. Now, regarding Maury's tweet, he ended up actually quickly deleting it. And that tweet, both the posting and deletion, it was met with a lot of mixed reactions. You had Chinese fans upset that an NBA leader spoke in support of Hong Kong, which, something to note here, the NBA has a lot of money to make in China, which is why over the weekend, the Rockets were scrambling to handle the situation. The Rockets owner, Tillman Fertitta, sent out a tweet clarifying that the tweet represented Maury's personal beliefs and not a political position of the team. Maury himself tried to do damage control on his own, addressing the situation on Sunday. There, he kind of started to backpedal and downplay his comments, saying, I did not intend my tweet to cause any offense to Rockets fans and friends of mine in China. I was merely voicing one thought based on one interpretation of one complicated event. I have had a lot of opportunities since that tweet to hear and consider other perspectives. I have always appreciated the significant support our Chinese fans and sponsors have provided, and I would hope that those who are upset will know that offending or misunderstanding them was not my intention. My tweets are my own and in no way represent the Rockets or the NBA. Which on that note, the NBA has also addressed the situation as well, taking a similar approach to Maury and trying to appease China and their fans, saying Maury's tweets are his own, the values of the league support individuals educating themselves and sharing their views on matters important to them, and we have great respect for the history and culture of China and hope that sports and the NBA can be used as a unifying force to bridge cultural divides and bring people together. But in response to this, China was essentially like, yo, we're China, no, go fuck yourself. And so we saw the Chinese government cutting ties with the Houston Rockets. It also upset a lot of Chinese businesses, including the team's Chinese sponsors who followed suit. Also the Chinese Basketball Association, along with Tencent, which streams NBA games in China to almost 500 million viewers, cut their ties as well. And some background here, the Rockets specifically are an incredibly popular team in China. Yao Ming, who's one of the most popular basketball players in the country, played for the Rockets. He's also a major reason behind the NBA's popularity in China. Also a big thing of note here is that Yao Ming himself is actually the current president of the CBA. Right, so when the CBA cut ties with the Rockets, it meant Ming was cutting ties with his former team. Right, so all the statements, the moves, it's a massive deal, and it's also part of the reason why it's believed that this is kind of just the beginning. According to a report from The Ringer, ownership is actually debating whether or not to replace Mori as the team's GM. You also had the owner of the Nets, Joe Tsai, who also co-founded Chinese media company Alibaba, saying, I don't know Daryl personally. Regarding Daryl, I am sure he's a fine NBA general manager. Also regarding the apology, saying he would take that at face value. But the hurt that this incident has caused will take a long time to repair. We also saw an example of an NBA player trying to calm things down, this with James Harden. Yeah, we apologize, um, you know. You know, we love China, we love, you know, playing there. Uh, I know for, for both of us individually, we go there, you know, once or twice a year. Uh, they show us the most important love. So, you know, we appreciate them as a fan base and uh, we love everything, you know, they're about and, and, uh, and, you know, we appreciate the support that they give us individually and as an organization. So. Uh, you know, we love you. Following this, we also saw a number of American politicians respond. You had presidential candidate Julian Castro tweeting, China is using its economic power to silence critics, even those in the U.S. You had Republican Senator Ted Cruz saying he was proud of Daryl Morey, but adding now in pursuit of big money, the NBA is shamefully retreating, and adding we're better than this. Human rights shouldn't be for sale, and the NBA shouldn't be assisting Chinese communist censorship. Republican Senator Rick Scott calling the statement from the NBA commissioner an absolute joke, as well as Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer saying no one should implement a gag rule on Americans speaking out for freedom. Also, like I was saying, this situation, it, it, it's primed to escalate even further. We're now seeing news this morning that China won't show NBA preseason games as backlash over Hong Kong tweet grows. Reportedly, that latest move was in response to the NBA commissioner, who actually on Monday night told Kyoto News, I have read some of the media suggesting that we are not supporting Daryl Morey, but in fact, we have. I think as a values-based organization that I want to make it clear that Daryl Morey is supported in terms of his ability to exercise his freedom of expression. But, like I said, there is a lot more to this China story, and not, not even and what's to come, but already what we're seeing in different avenues. For one of the more recent ones, we jump from sports to esports. So there's this professional Hearthstone player called Wei Chung. And according to reports, Wei Chung appeared on a Taiwanese Hearthstone stream in a gas mask and goggles and said, liberate Hong Kong, revolution of our age. And as far as why the gas mask and the goggles, it appears that was a reference to the ban on masks in Hong Kong now. Now following that, the clip was removed from the Taiwanese Hearthstone channel, though the internet is the internet, and so it began to spread and blow up even more. And so what we ended up seeing after this is that Blizzard Right, the company
company behind the game, the tournament, they announced this player's immediate removal from Grandmasters, they're withholding his prize money for his participation, and they're banning him from taking part in Hearthstone Esports for a year. With Hearthstone announcing this on their official blog and pointing to a rule, reading, engaging in any act that in Blizzard's sole discretion brings you into public disrepute, offends a portion or group of the public, or otherwise damages Blizzard's image will result in removal from Grandmasters, etc., etc. And then they actually had the audacity to include, while we stand by one's right to express individual thoughts and opinions. Did you though? Okay, actually I'll save it. Players and other participants that elect to participate in our esports competitions must abide by the official competition rules. The two parts of that one sentence do not appear to go together, which may also be the reason why they disabled comments on that post. Also, crazy enough, Blizzard also fired the two commentators who it appears did not also call for anything with Hong Kong. They were just there. Right, so in my opinion, this is Blizzard blatantly saying, hey, the business that we have in China, that is more important than free speech. Which, hey, they're a private organization, they have rules in place, they're allowed to do what they want, and I, as someone that is outside of it, can call them fucking pathetic cowards. Also, congratulations to everyone involved, as we always constantly see when you try to suppress something, when you try to push something out. You just draw more attention to it, so the people in Hong Kong, you're just drawing more attention to their struggle. But that is only possible if we have people that are not terrified of China or losing money in China. Because, like places like Axios have pointed out, right, this is not a covert operation from China. China is using their market power to bully American organizations, right? As the report points out, this is just the latest in this. You had Marriott apologizing to China after Beijing shut down the hotel's chain's website because it listed Hong Kong, Taiwan, Tibet, and Macau as separate countries. You had American, United, and Delta bending to China's will last summer and scrubbing references to Taiwan as its own country. Hell, actually one of the most recent stories and a story that I am, I am happy to see. According to reports, South Park this week was erased from major platforms in China after an episode last week taunted Chinese censors and the far-reaching effect they often have on American entertainment. It was an episode called Banned in China, a little wordplay. Popular platforms when you were searching for South Park. On Tuesday, you'd get the message, according to the relevant law and regulation, this section is temporarily not open. And so following this, we saw the show's creators, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, apologize, saying, like the NBA, we welcome the Chinese censors into our homes and into our hearts. We too love money more than free freedom and democracy. In closing, she doesn't look just like Winnie the Pooh at all. And I think for me, that's a solid note that I, that I kind of want to end on because, I mean, as far as my opinion, one, fuck she and the Chinese government. I'm not saying that about the Chinese people. I think it is incredibly important to separate governments with their people, especially uh, when you have a government like China. And also, two, fuck these cowardly companies that are choosing the money in China over human rights. You can make all the excuses you want, but in part, to a certain degree, in certain areas, you are being complicit. But hey, that's a story, a little bit of my opinion, and of course I pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts around this? And that's actually where we're going to end today's show. And hey, if you like this video, let us know. Take a second to tap that like button. Also, if you're new here, be sure to tap that subscribe button. Definitely ring that bell to turn on notifications. And hey, if you're looking for more to watch, maybe you missed yesterday's show, you want to catch up, or you want to check out our latest deep dive, you can click or tap right there to watch either of those. But with that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces, and I'll see you tomorrow.